sword make Uruk pretty? Uruk make man pretty? Pretty dead! Ha ha! Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor is a fast, impressive action game. It features fluid, savage combat, granting you a real sense of power and allows for many instances of organic storytelling. Let down only by its tendency to get repetitive. Shadow of Mordor features not one, but two main protagonists. After you, a ranger called Talion, are ritually murdered together with your family at the very start of the game in an impressive, dramatic cutscene, you will meld with what is essentially second you, a rave suffering from amnesia. The two of you are bound together in death and make your way across Mordor, searching for information, and with information comes power. Your journey across this dark land filled with numerous ruined structures and decaying corpses then directly leads you into the middle of orcish political power struggles. You will directly and indirectly be responsible for the rise and fall of orcish grunts to captains and from captains even to war chiefs. The story in Shadow of Mordor takes place in between the events of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings and it isn't very remarkable. Unfortunately, the main villains are immediately introduced and then afterwards hardly ever explained or built upon any further, nor do you ever find out much about orc society, but the story at large does its job, and it is presented in beautiful cutscenes. In combination with the excellent audio, be it the fantastic fitting music, the great voice acting of the main characters, side characters and random orcs, or even the good sounds of combat as you hear swords clash and arrows fly past your head, make for an excellent atmosphere. That certainly makes you feel as if you are deep within Middle-earth. Much of the game's narrative revolves around that orcish political power struggle and takes place in what is undoubtedly the biggest highlight of Shadow of Mordor, the Nemesis system. The system is responsible for moving the orcs up through their rankings and, of course, inevitably, all the way down as you come to collect their heads. The Nemesis system feels robust and tracks a great amount of variables regarding as to who you fought, who won or fled, and more or less, how you did the actual fighting. The consequences of your actions then change the captains in both dialogue and visual appearance. Take down an enemy captain by burning his face off, and he might return with a visibly scarred face to express his displeasure with your treatment, which you can then respond to by filling his head with arrows, in which case he might actually return yet again. Captains furthermore have power struggles with one another, which you can access on specific spots on the map. These struggles can be anything from recruiting more orcs to their side, assassinations sent to a rival captain, or straight up a duel between the two. The winner of a struggle then advances in power, making them tougher opponents in future fights. It is a unique and chaotic mechanic that plays a major role in the way your playthrough turns out, and it does it excellently. Managing the political tree is one of the best parts of Shadow of Mordor and offers a lot of entertainment as you can visibly see your captains change over time and create your own rivalries. It creates an actual environment for organic storytelling. Combat itself is yet another major highlight of Shadow of Mordor. It is fast and satisfying, granting a real sense of power. The animation quality is very high in both attack animations and the lovely, gory executions. The basic combat mechanics involve swinging your sword at an orc in quick succession and acrobatically parrying every strike that comes in your direction. Furthermore, you can at any point enter a limited slow motion mode by drawing your bow and, providing you have the magical ammo, can easily pick off anything that stands in your way. Additionally, in time your ranger wraith hybrid will gain experience that can be spent on a number of different upgrades. These can come in the form of flat, simple upgrades such as an increased ammo count or a higher health pool, but also come in the form of additional abilities, some of which are locked by story missions, and range from controlling the wildlife of Mordor to stealthy assassinations. The end result is a good array of different ways to kill and fight orcs, from your trusty sword to assassinating orcs on top of ledges with your dagger or scoring a number of headshots with your bow. A set of wraith abilities that can stun enemies or set them on fire, and last, but certainly not least, riding on top of a giant lumbering beast that can pick up orcs and eat them as a little snack. Shadow of Mordor has varied and extremely fluid combat that throughout the entire game remains immensely enjoyable. Now, on the flip side, one of the weakest parts of Shadow of Mordor is its lacking difficulty, which immediately contributes to the repetitive nature of the game. If you assault a stronghold at the early parts of the game, a big orc bastion where you tend to fight war chiefs, providing you have summoned them with their respective missions, then yes, you will have a hard time. Orcs in Shadow of Mordor do a good job at surrounding you and overwhelming you whenever they can, and in the case of the strongholds, they will sound the alarm at which point your chances of winning are very slim. 
but this is really only the case if you are fighting in strongholds, and even then, this difficulty will quickly vanish as you advance further into the story and unlock the branding ability, a key mechanic that you receive roughly halfway through the game. In combat, simply wailing on an orc tends to be far too effective, and as long as you properly time your parries, you will have little chance of losing a fight. This is completely fine in the case of simple orcish grunts, but even against a warchief, this incredibly simple tactic works far too well. The vast majority of warchiefs I've fought, I easily killed simply by stunning them with an early game wraith ability and then doing a high amount of damage with simple sword strikes. Yes, warchiefs will have their own set of invulnerabilities and these can be important. If you're really unlucky or rather lucky, you will even get one that can be invulnerable to melee attacks, which then actually prompts you to think of something else, but rarely did I find warchiefs with an actual set of abilities that would provide any sort of challenge. These warchiefs and captains do increase in power over time, but time only passes if you die or purposely advance time yourself, which is not something that you're quickly incentivized to do. The power struggles between captains will remain on the map indefinitely unless you advance time, and orcs that already are in a warchief position basically require you to purposely lose a fight. The branding mechanic that is introduced halfway through the game then furthermore makes Shadow of Mordor easier. It's certainly an interesting mechanic, essentially it boils down to mind control, and adds another layer of complexity to the nemesis system. Branding your own captains and sending them on assassination missions is fun, but again, makes the game easy. Near the end, I even had some of my own captain skill warchiefs without me ever becoming involved, other than starting the mission. Branding simple grunts can be done through a multitude of ways and is an extremely easy thing to do, which then makes fights in that area directly easier, as a good amount of those orcs are now going to be fighting on your side. Branding itself is then a fun mechanic, but as it made what I already found to be a relatively easy game even easier, I had to purposely go out of my way not to brand orcs as I was reaching the end. Maybe if power struggles were actually timed, would the game offer more of a challenge? Because as it stands, it's more or less counterintuitive to have to advance time for captains and warchiefs to become more powerful and to increase the difficulty of the game. Maybe if the game had more enemy variety, as it stands you will mainly fight orcs and these come in a limited number of different classes that can all be dealt with with relative ease. Or maybe if branding an orc required more effort, would the game be more difficult? Currently, the lacking difficulty in Shadow of Mordor leads to the game being significantly more repetitive and undermines the importance of the Warchiefs. Not to mention, you won't find any challenge from the story bosses in this game either. And except for the very first boss, they are anticlimactic at best, as they are centered around short fights entirely made up of quicktime events. Lastly, one additional point that leads to the repetitive nature of the game are the zones you play in. Shadow of Mordor is divided into two maps, and although these two maps look different from one another, a wasteland and a grassland, the maps themselves are incredibly similar, around pretty much every corner. A combination of broken roads and ruined structures, which doesn't make exploration much of an appeal. But those are the only two points I can fault Shadow of Mordor for. It is not too surprising that a game centered around endlessly, brutally executing groups of orcs can lead to a certain degree of repetition. Luckily, combat is extremely solid in Shadow of Mordor and at no point did killing orcs ever actually get boring. The nemesis system is executed very well and truly is a highlight of Shadow of Mordor despite it being undermined by the lack of difficulty. It still manages to create numerous instances of organic storytelling that are highly entertaining. In the end, Shadow of Mordor is definitely recommendable. Yes, it can get repetitive due to a lack of difficulty and the unvaried design of the environments, but as an action game with great combat, an interesting and unique nemesis system, and a solid atmosphere that feels like a Middle-earth game, Shadow of Mordor is a great game to pick up.